Welcome to UGC EPG Partshala. Hello friends, I am Dr. Isha Kaushik. I am associated with Department of Geography, Kirodimal College, University of Delhi. Today in this episode of E Partshala, I am here to discuss with you mountain building, its type and processes. So without any further ado, let's get started. Orogeny is an essential process in the differentiation of the earth crust. The term orogeny to explain the processes of mountain building Mountains are basically landforms of the second order, disseminated all over the globe, not only located on the continents, but also upon the ocean floors. The conundrum of mountain building has long perplexed geologists. However, there have been no dearth of theories to elaborate on the processes. Since long, geologists have known that the fold mountains have been built up or on gigantic accumulation of sedimentary deposits which have been compressed, folded and uplifted but the specific mechanism whereby this was effective has long dodged them. In view of the fact that fold mountains represent the world's major and most uh, complex mountain systems, the process of mountain building is frequently described in terms of their formation. On the other hand, mountains can be classified according to their for the most part dominant characteristics and the process of their formation. Following are the mountains. Number one, residual or relic mountains. They are the remnants of former old mountains and plateaus which have been subject to severe denudation. They are formed by differential erosion because of differing solubility and erodibility of rocks in the region. Certain resistant areas may hold on out of the lowering by agents of denudation as in the mountain Mononoc USA and also a plateau may be dissected by rivers as in Deccan Plateau by leaving behind residual mountains. Next in the row is volcanic mountains. They are formed by the accretion of volcanic materials around the zone of volcanic eruption. Oceanic ridges are formed by dispersion, boundary volcanism and uh, conversion of boundary volcanism procedure or uh, island arcs like the Japanese arc. In plate volcanism at hotspots may perhaps manufacture volcanic mountains like in Hawaii. The third one is the block, the fault block mountains. These are formed by vertical movements of blocks next to faults because of tensional forces or ex, uh, ex occasionally compression uh, at uh, work in a region. As a result, the block is moved, to, moved up uh, relative to the um, neighboring areas forming the, forming the mountains. Black forest vosages and uh, Hunstruck mountains offer good examples. The next is the upwarped mountains. These are shaped by warming of continental crust compared to the surrounding magnetic eruptions, which, uh, which more often than not causes the upwarming of uh, eventually exposed due to erosion of the overlying materials. Upwarming in a limited area forms dome mountains, which look like blisters in the earth's surface. Large scale upwarming when dissected by agents of denudation forms a mountain range. The next in the row is the fold mountains. They encompass the principal and the most multifaceted mountain system. Even though uh, fold mountains be at variance from one another on scrupulous details, but all uh, have some universal features. They are arranged in um, linear belts usually consisting of more or less parallel ridges. They consist of broad sedimentary sequences, the largest part of which are of shallow marine origin. They all have folded structure, faulting, thrusting, metamorphism and igneous activities are present in changeable degrees. Examples of fold mountains are Himalayan, Alps, Andes, Appalachian, Urals, etc. Quite a lot of theories have been suggested to account for succeeding orogenies 
throughout the course of the um, Earth's history. The major orogenies have occurred at intervals of 20 to 100 million years for convenient purposes. Conversely, these periods of mountain building may be divided into three broad groups. These are young mountain building, then you have old mountain building, and the ancient, uh, ancient crystalline shields. Near the beginning, theories of old mountain orogeny were considered by a contractionist approach. The contractionist considered the earth as a heat engine running down that is cooling and contracting based on the fundamental assertion they put forward their theories of mountain building. For example, Harold Jeffries, he suggested that fold mountains are simply wrinkles in the earth's crust producing as the earth cooled from its original semi molten state. Jolly on the other hand suggested periodic melting and solidification of the um, cementic layer due to radioactive heat and consequent sinking of bowing up of the sialic layer. This process creates horizontal compressive forces causing folding, thrusting and upliftment of sediments at the continental margins resulting in the formation of the mountains. These two and many other early theorists could not achieve extensive uh, acceptance. Any variable theory most explain the deposition of thick sedimentary sequences in shallow marine water. Their compaction, folding, upliftment, faulting, thrusting, metamorphism and associated igneous activity. Geosynclinal theory. The geosynclinal theory was the first theory to obtain extensive acceptance because it uh, hurled light on the most of the distinguished features of fold mountains and the processes involved in their formation. It was during 1850 by James Hall and later on modified by Dana throughout the 1870s, they were the first to talk about the subsistence of long linear trough called the syncline and um, subsidence of crust under the weight of uh, deposition. These theorists necessarily give details about the orogeny in five different stages. So the stage number one is geosynclinal stage. In this stage, gigantic amounts of sediments mount up on a large linear trough and which keeps subsiding under the weight of deposition. Owing to isostatic, uh, isostatic adjustments, the layer below sediment deposition in the continental shelves becomes synclinal. Lithogenesis, the next stage is lithogenesis. It is the process in which uh, compaction and uh, cementation work. Therefore, deposited sediments are converted into the solid rocks. The next one in the line is tectogenesis. It is the process by which the earth's Crystal rocks are uh, detained and their structures created with such processes act regionally, they contribute to orogenesis. Next is orogenesis. It is a process which comprises of folding, faulting and thrusting during which sediments within geosynclines are bulked and deformed as they are compressed into long linear mountain chains. At the same time, some sediments on being pushed much deeper melts to produce magma which moves upwards and impinges the overlying sediments. Consequently, a complex mountain chain consisting of folded and faulted sedimentary and volcanic rock surrounding a core of uh, igneous intrusions and metamorphic rock is created. This stage is transitionary. The next one is the glyptogenesis. It is the mainly orogenetic phase during which the distinguishing surface forms uh, are sculpted by erosion, removal of material from the top and resultant upward isostatic adjustment ex exposes the um, batholiths from uh, underneath. The mountain is in due course formed a shield even though 
uh, through a geosynclinal theory provide though the geosynclinal theory provides for the basic steps in mountain building the underlying uh, cause of orogenesis was not explained and there were many missing links a number of objections were raised against the theory what produces the subsidence in the geosyncline why did sediments uh, mount up comparatively undisturbed for million of years and all of a sudden go through a period of deformatory such unanswered questions forced geologists to uh, think about it in different perspective to appra to appraise the complex uh, complex mountain building process the next in the uh, line is the plate tectonic model it is an improvement over the geosynclinal idea it throws light on the assortment of processes in mountain building and decodes many of the puzzling aspects orogenesis results as huge segments of earth's lithosphere are displaced according to this theory fold mountains orogeny occurs along converging plate boundaries there the con colliding plates supply for the compressional stress to fold fault metamorphose thrust and uplift the thick sedimentary accumulation along the margins of continents at the same time as melting of subducted oceanic floor lithosphere provides a source of uh, magma that intrudes and um, extrudes further deforming and um, metamorphosizing these deposits on the other hand the characteristics of mountain belts and the sequence of events vary depending on the type of interaction at the plate margins and the type of rock sequence involved in the deformation there are three types of converging interactions that is ocean to ocean continent to ocean and continent to continent collisions mountain buildings and island arcs over an extended period plentiful episodes of volcanism uh, erupted with the buoyancy created by intrusive uh, igneous masses slowly but surely increase the size and elevation of developing the arc the arc is greater at height accelerates the erosion rate and as a result the amount of uh, sediment added to the adjacent sea floor and to the back are formed moreover to the sediments derived from land deep water deposits and also scraped off the descending oceanic plates as these sediments are um, piled up in the front of the overriding plate they form what is known as the accretionary wedge the compressional stresses wielded by the converging plates cause the accretionary wedge along uh, the silvers of oceanic crust that have been sheared from descending plate to become long winded folded and cut by copious thrust faults continuous growth can build an accretionary wedge that is in due course large enough to stand above the sea level landward of the trench of the volcanic arc sediments are also being deformed and metamorphosed there are uh, these these are metamorphosed in the accretionary wedge as primarily the the result of strong compressional force created by converging plates metamorphism in the vicinity of the volcanic arc is associated with the emplacement of large magma bodies these diverse activities result in the creation of a mature island arc composed of two roughly parallel orogenetic belts geologists have only recently uh, uh, come to realize their significance of the island arcs in the process of mountain building there is now general agreement that the processes operating of modern island arcs represent one of the stages in the formation of the earth's major mountain belts because island arcs are carried by uh, moving oceanic plates it is possible for two arcs to collide and slide together to form as larger crustal fragments moreover island arcs may also be accreted to continent size blocks 
in which case they became incorporated into a mountain belt. Subduction type orogenesis along continental margins. The first stage in the development of Andean type mountain belt occurs prior to the formation of the subduction zone. During this period, the continental margin is passive, that is, it is not a plate boundary but a part of the same plate as the adjoining oceanic crust. Here, depression of sediments on the continental shelf is producing a thick wedge of shallow water sandstones, limestones and shales beyond the continental shelf. Turbidity currents are depositing sediments on the continental slope and rise. At some point, the continental margin become active, a subduction zone forms and the deformation starts. A good plate to examine an active continental margin is the west uh, coast of South America. Here the Nazca plate is being subducted beneath the South American plate along the Peril Trench. Once the oceanic plate descends to about 100 kilometers, partial melting generates magma that migrates upward intruding and supplementary deforming these strata. Andean type mountain belts has mature island arcs are composed of two roughly parallel zones. The landward segment is the volcanic arc which made up of volcanoes and large intrusive bodies intermixed with high temperature metamorphic rocks. The belt located seaward of the volcanic arc is the accretionary wedge. It consists of volcanic debris, continental collisions, the development of a mountain system produced by a continental collision is believed to occur as follows. After the breakup of a continental landmass, a thick wedge of sediment is deposited along the passive continental margins, thereby increasing the size of the newly formed continent. For reasons not yet understood, the ocean basin begins to close and the continents begin to converge. Plate convergence results in the subduction of the intervening oceanic slab and initiates an extended period of igneous activity. The activity results in the formation of volcanic arc with associated uh, granitic intrusions, debris eroded from the volcanic arc and material scraped from the descending plates adds to the wedges of the sediments along the continental margins. In due course, the continental blocks collide. This event, which often involves igneous activity, severely deforms and metamorphoses the uh, entrapped sediments. Continental convergence cause these deformed materials and intermittently slabs of crustal material to be displaced up on the colliding plates along the thrust faults. This activity shortens and thickens the crustal rocks producing elevated mountain belts. Eventually, a hinge of the plate boundary ends the growth of the mountain. Only at this point do these processes of erosion become the overriding forces in altering the landscapes. Large quantities of core sediments are deposited in basins found within and coupled with isostatic adjustments eventually reduce this mountainous landscape to the average thickness of the continents. This sequence of events is thought to have been duplicated many times throughout geologic and climatic uh, settings. Varied in each case in the point, thus the formation of each mountain chain must be regarded as an exceptional event. Orogenesis and continental accretion. Recent investigations point out that yet another mechanism of mountain building exists. This new proposal suggests that relatively small crustal fragments collide and merge with continental margins and that through this process of collision and accretion, many of the mountainous regions rimming the Pacific have been generated. Researchers believe that prior to their accretion to a continental block, some of the fragments may have been microcontinents, 
similar in nature to the present day island of the Madagascar. Many other words, island arcs such as Japan, the Philippines and the Aleutian Islands which presently rim the Pacific. The widely accepted view today is that the oceanic plates move and they carry the embedded island arcs and microcontinents uh, towards the subduction zone. There the upper portions of these thickened zones are peeled from the descending plate and thrust in relatively thin sheets upon the adjacent continental blocks. This newly added material increases the width of the continents. Geologists refer to these accreted crustal blocks as terrains. Basically the term terrain designates any crustal fragment where geologic history uh, are distinct from the adjoining terrain. Terrain come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are just uh, small volcanic islands, others such as the one composing the entire Indian subcontinent arc are much larger. The removal of thrust sheets from subducted plates manifestly plays a very important role in this accretionary process. On the other hand, the manner in which thin sheets are uh, peeled from the descending oceanic lithosphere remains doubtful. Auxiliary many locations where accretion is thought to have occurred, substantiation of the volcanic activity normally associated with subduction is lacking. In the face of these problems and many other questions which are uh, unanswered, the plate tectonics theory appears to hold the maximum guarantee for understanding the origin and evolution of the earth's major mountain beds. The geologic history of such of each mountain system would surely be re-evaluated in terms of work with uh, which shed new insight on their uh, evolutionary histories and will also uh, be fruitful in evaluating the theory itself. In this way, new, uh, new insights into the workings of, of our dynamic planet will surface. The origin and evolution of the continental crust, what roles have plate tectonics and mountain building played in events that had to be uh, the origin and evolution of the continent. At this time, no solitary answer to this question has met with uh, awe-inspiring acceptance. At one extreme is a proposal that most, if not all, continental crust originated during the uh, primeval molten stage and uh, coincided with the segregation of uh, material that produced the earth's or core and mental. A differing view which has uh, obtained support in recent years is basically that the continents have grown larger through geologic time by the gradual accretion of material derived from the upper mantle. A main tenet of this hypothesis is that the primitive uh, crust of an oceanic type and the continents were small or possibly non-existent then through the chemical differentiation of mental material. The continent slowly grew. This view proposes that the formation of continental material takes place in numerous stages. The first step occurred in the upper mantle directly beneath the oceanic ridges. Here, partial melting of the rock uh, periodite yields basaltic magma which rises to form oceanic crust. As new oceanic floor is generated at this, at this uh, ridge crest, oldest oceanic crust is being destroyed at the oceanic trenches. In trench regions, the sub subducted oceanic crust is heated sufficiently to cause partial melting. This gives rise to some relatively light silica rich rocks which are then surfaced in the volcanic arcs. The subducted oceanic crust deposited at the lightest uh, constituents continue to sink and is no longer involved in the process of generating crustal rocks. According to one view, 
the earliest continental rocks came into existence at a few uh, isolated island arcs. Once formed, these island arcs came together to form larger continental masses. At the same time, as deforming the volcanic and sedimentary rocks that were deposited in the superseding oceans. The thick course, this uh, processes basically these processes generated masses of continental crust having the size and thickness of the modern con continents. Evidence supporting the view of continental growth comes from the research in regions of plate subduction such as Japan and the western flank of America. Equally vital on the other hand has been the research conducted in the stable interiors of the continents, predominantly in the shield areas. Topical indicators are that the rocks of the shield areas are mineralogically and structurally similar to the rocks found at active continental margins where oceanic crust of is basically being consumed. More specifically, the granite gneiss uh, terrains are chemically similar to the intrusive uh, igneous bedrocks. Radiometric dating of the rocks from shield areas, including those in Minnesota are, and Greenland, has uh, revealed that the oldest terrains formed some 2.8 billion years ago. This date is believed to represent one of the earliest periods of mountain building as that time presently only 10% of the present continental crust existed. The next major period of continental evolution may have taken place between 3 and 2.5 billion years ago as modeled by radiometric dates of similar terrains which are found in the shield areas of Canada, Africa and Western Australia. It is not known with certainty how many periods of mountain building have occurred since the formation of this earth. The last major period evidently uh, considered with the clashing of the uh, pre-Antarctic and other ancient ocean basins during the formation of supercontinent, supercontinent Pangaea. If the continents do in fact grew by accumulation of material to their flanks, then the continents have grown larger at the cost of the oceanic crust. This view basically assumes the buoyancy and the indestructibility of continental crust. Even the sediment derived from the erosion of continental material that is subducted along with oceanic plate belts and uh, reforms to get the continents, even though continental crest apparently remains afloat indefinitely, some continents are occasionally fragmented and carried along in conveyor belt fashion until they collide with other uh, land masses. Presently, Australia, which is separated from Antarctica, is being rattled northward and uh, will probably join Asia in much of the coming period. Consequently, according to this view, fragmentation and the formation of new crustal blocks that accompany the reshuffling of these fragments are responsible for the present volume structure and configuration of continents. Plate tectonic comes into sight to be the major force in crustal evolution over last two billion years. However, during the early history of the earth, the heat released by the decay of uh, uh, uranium, thorium and potassium must have been more than twice as many as it is today. Thank you for being patient. Happy learning.